She can feel it. Kong. Godzilla. They can feel it, too. Something is coming. Something even they're afraid of. Some of your favorite big monsters are back. The latest sequel in the series, Godzilla vs. Kong, is titled The New Empire. And this time, instead of pitting the two of them against each other, they unite against a mysterious force threatening to destroy life as they know it. They're set to conquer their enemies and the box office this weekend. The CBC's Eli Glasner joins us now for a review. So, Eli, where do we even start? We start... With the words on screen, Andrew, somewhere on hollow earth. And I think this is, it's a suggestion, maybe a warning, maybe just a, a little bit of what to expect. That is a sign, somewhere in hollow earth, take your brain, take any critical reasoning, take any semblance of rational thought or logic, you can put that aside. You're not gonna need it for the next hour and 55 minutes. It is not that kind of film because Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, finds the titans, finds the kaju, finds these mega sized monsters reaching their final form. We just saw there, let's see it again if we can. Yes, Kong gets his own infinity gauntlet. You may have seen that hand reaching out of the sand. And I'm not talking about Godzilla's. There it is, the, you know, it's nice, nice, nice little glove there. And Godzilla <laughs> gets his own uh, Barbie pink makeover, which is nice. I mean, you know, the blue is getting kind of old, so it's nice to see him trying out the pink. I think it looks nice on him. <laughs> I am talking about the ridiculous, city-destroying, titan-tussling, remarkable, over-the-top levels of creature combat. Now, Eli, you might say, what about the humans? What are they doing? Well, Andrew, they are dying. They are dying in massive numbers, in the thousands, in the millions, as Kong and Godzilla and a giant crab and a squid and whatever is left in the Atlantic all <laughs> play patty cake. Now, oh, the humanity, perhaps you're saying at home, but there is no humanity because when we are in hollow earth, there we are. This is a giant realm of CGI, a vast vista of computer effects, entire worlds, hollow earth. If you could talk about the hollow script, but let's talk about the human actors who are not so much actors as they are just talkers. Really, they are explainers. That is their function. Let's take a look. For most of human civilization, we believed that life could only exist on the surface of our planet. So there is Rebecca Hall as the character I'm calling Science Lady. Science Lady likes to study Kong. Then you have Brian Tyree Henry. Now he plays the nerd because every one of these action films needs the nerd. He's a nerdy guy who does nerdy things. He has a blog. Nobody re writes and talks about blogs anymore, but he does. He has a podcast with hundreds of subscribers. And yet this nerd is the guy, the Science Lady goes for help when Kong starts acting strange. And then finally we have Dan Stevens as Trapper, which is basically like Ace Ventura meets Magnum P.I. His entire personality is his Hawaiian shirt. Let's take a look at that and some of the action. <laughs> Feel like going for a ride? Thought you'd never ask. Just try not to swallow your tongue. What? Is that a mini Kong? Oh my God. That's not just a signal. That's a call for war. That's a call for war. <laughs> war on your brain. <laughs> war on your brain. Okay, so for those who are curious, the one or two people out there, tell us about the story the and what's story. happening. The story. Let me, uh, the story. Okay, so mm. Kong is sad. Kong actually has a sore tooth. I mean, that is tough right there. And none of the other monsters want to play with this guy other than his spiky friend on the surface of the earth. You know, when they get together, it's a little bit of friction there. So he meets, there he is, this little red ape who introduces him to this big, tall, scary guy named Scar. And Scar, there he is, 
controls an ice-breathing monster I'm gonna name Frosty. Now, while Godzilla is up on the surface of the Earth playing Pokemon, playing kind of gotta catch them all, he's been hunting Titans and building up his energy. He's basically a rechargeable battery with a bad temper. Oh, and science lady's indigenous deaf adopted daughter has a connection to Kong and gets a message in the psychic group chat that something really bad is gonna happen. So, if you, Andrew, have safely removed your brain and placed it in a bell jar, you won't mind when the humans constantly stop the action to explain everything. You could almost enjoy this as like a supersized version of Homeward Bound because the animals are the best part. You know, it's just a movie about a gorilla and Godzilla trying to get along and go along. The lizard gets a makeover, Kong gets a snazzy new power glove. And I will say, and I'm gonna do a little demonstration, there was a moment before they turned Rio to dust where it actually, here's a friend Kong and Godzilla, and they were <laughs> leaping into battle, and they froze the picture in slow motion. They were just suspended in front of me. And as I actually felt my brain melting out my ears, <laughs> I thought, you know, that's kind of beautiful. It's kind of remarkable. It is also kind of ridiculous. And so let me conclude with my rating. One star for Kong, one star for Mr. Scaly Godzilla, and half a star for the Hawaiian shirt. So that's oh, wow. uh, two and a half out of five. Oh, that's kind of mean. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Eli. CBC, Eli Glasner.